Hello and welcome to FeatherCast. My name is Rich Bowen. And today I have the uh, privilege of speaking with Josh Elzer, who is a PMC member on the HBase project. Thank you for making time to talk with me. Thanks for having me, Rich. So I imagine that most of our audience is probably familiar with, with HBase. It's, it's been around for about 10 years and it's, it's, uh, it's part of the Hadoop ecosystem. But if you could just give us a quick overview of what the project is, what it does, how people use it. Sure, yeah. Um, you're, you're spot on that a lot of people definitely know what HBase is, um, but it is interesting to see the number of people we have coming in who still maybe have heard of it, but uh, don't have a good idea of how they would actually go about using it. Um, so in terms of technical uh, definitions, HBase is a distributed, horizontally scalable key value store, which can provide fast random reads and writes. We can ingest large batches of data very uh, with high amount of throughput, and we can effectively run uh, very parallel scans, um, read workloads over that data. Um, so when we talk about HBase, we're typically referring to like a cluster, so an HBase cluster. And that means you know, we have ones of nodes up to hundreds or even thousands of nodes that make up one HBase instance. This project is 10 years old. In fact, it's turning 10 years old this month. So happy birthday and congratulations. <laughs> Tell me something about the history of this. Did this start within the Hadoop project or has it always been independent? Yeah, so I think um, this was one of the early sort of sub-projects of Hadoop, uh, things that have sort of spun out of Hadoop. Um, I actually had to do some digging to find out. This was before my involvement, but um, the name HBase actually originated as a portmanteau of Hadoop and database. So smushing them together there to make HBase. Since then, we've kind of moved beyond that and uh, taken sort of a, a made up word like that and uh, have found our definition in life in that, you know, making that a name for ourselves rather than being um, tied to Hadoop, um, but I think there's a lot of pride within the project to both remember where we've come from, but see where we've gone now. Um, we definitely have found a niche for ourselves that uh, extends beyond just Hadoop. So this can be used under under other things like what? Yeah, so a lot of the recent work, um, so you, I'm sure you're familiar with the big shift into um, leveraging public cloud infrastructure. We hear a lot of users come in who want to say, um, they want to support a dynamic workload that isn't fixed on racks of servers sitting in a data center. So this is one of these things that's a very common um, theme for us to start to manage because um, one of the underpinning themes that we have for HBase users is that they like to use HBase for mission critical data. This is one of the, the core tenets. If you go across all sorts of use cases, HBase is really servicing these mission critical workloads that if HBase ever goes down, like there is a very big problem. Um, you know, often losing revenue, users can't access your system, like big problems. Um, so one of the things that comes up is also how do we go and move away when we have these things? It's like I can suddenly spin up 100 nodes at once. All of a sudden, I can spin down 100 nodes all at once. How do we sort of um, take our mission critical software, such as HBase, and how do we map this onto something like that? So once we're running in public cloud, um, oftentimes we can't get some of the cost benefit savings that um, we expect to get because HDFS is a rather slow thing to go and move data from one to another. So when we're running in a public cloud, there's often storage layers there that we would want to leverage instead of running um, these very storage dense nodes as we expect on an on-prem installation. So a lot of times in HBase, we're seeing a lot more shift into saying, how can we use um, cloud providers blob stores to host the data in HBase? Um, without sacrificing any of the durability guarantees that HBase provides. Now, on a project like this where, where that kind of performance is so important, I've seen on other projects where that, that poses a real challenge bringing in new developers because yeah. the bar is so high. Yeah. <laughs> um, where, where can people get connected with this project? Where can people uh, you know, start contributing? That is a very big challenge that we've always faced. Even the most simple of things that a, you know, a longtime developer can notice, hey, you know, they're working on some nitty gritty feature. Um, they realize, oh, maybe uh, I see something in passing that, you know, hey, I'm not gonna stop and fix this, but I'm gonna follow something else. And, you know, this is, should be a very time box, very simple thing to fix. Um, and then a couple of weeks later, somebody picks this up and we realize, oh, that rabbit hole is also pretty darn deep. <laughs> um, so there's a fun little um, problem that we have there is definitely, how do we make enough um, user consumable things or uh, um, new developer consumable things that we can sort of keep the lifeblood of the project going? 
Um, one of the things that we actually really pride ourselves on and the community is that we like the fact that we can point to specific individuals and say, we have concrete examples of people who have come in who aren't necessarily from a strong distributed systems database design engineer standpoint. Um, so we've had a lot of great um, contributors, PMC members, and even VPs who have done come from lines other than just a pure classical software development stance. Um, so we're always really happy when people come in and say, hey, notice some of these docs are on. We'd like to go and, and fix these and improve these for us. Um, people who come in and um, do software quality testing. Um, we're always happy we have a diverse suite of distributed multi-day tests that we can run that sort of exercise the fault tolerance and durability that HBase really um, is giving as its primary feature for people. That's why they like the consistency of the database and they like that when things fall over, it doesn't mean we have a complete outage. So our testing to stress that is super important because if we don't, if we get that wrong, we're going to lose our users, essentially. We're really happy when we get other people, and we always really like to try to strive to encourage new people to come in. Um, we've done a little bit of work recently to try to separate some of our connection libraries, so integrations with other projects. Um, so with Apache Spark is another example. Mm -hmm. um, people have written um, connectors with, I believe, Apache Kafka as well. Pretty much anything that exists in this sort of data movement, um, access query layers. Um, we usually have some sort of integration. Um, and we also like when people come along and they just say, hey, I, I built this thing. I'd like to go and make it reusable for other people to benefit from as well. And I noticed that you do have a pretty large pool of committers. You got 89. <laughs> 89 people that are committers on this project, and that kind of indicates that you're probably a welcoming bunch. Yeah. So where are you going in the next 10 years? Is that something that you can you can see out that far? Or is... I certainly have opinions as an individual. I don't know if we know as a project exactly where we'll go. I think there's, um, I think a lot of us are cognizant of the sort of shift in how computing itself is going to work in the future. I think, you know, going back to public cloud, I think we've all sort of embraced that this is something we have to be open to. Um, but I think there's also a subset of people who would say, you're never going to completely get away from on-prem, our sort of bread and butter use case right now, where we have um, for these hypercritical deployments, you know, we need on-prem hardware because that's going to be what we require. Um, I think over the years, what we have seen coming out of us is a push on how do we both increase the observability and stability of the product. So a lot of the recent changes we have been making are around things that we noticed in HBase 1, which was our um, what we're shifting off of now. We're sort of full swing into development on HBase 2 releases. Um, so HBase 2 has a lot of work that goes into sort of re-architecting how do we do distributed fault tolerant operations within HBase itself. So the goal is to say, you know, how do we make sure that this, um, given what we know from all these years of running this, how can we make it better? How can we make sure that we're writing better quality code going forward? Um, so I think there's always a um, evolution of how do we make um, the product itself better and prevent those um, bad situations from happening going forward. Um, but I think the other side of it is, it's always, we're looking at what are other people doing? How are other people accessing their data? What is the sort of the, the new hotness of what people are using to be effective to build an application? Because HBase is just a database, it's a storage layer. It's not something like a relational database where you plug some um, object relational mapping library on top of it, and then you're just writing, um, you know, writing some POJOs and, and doing some of these very high level operations. HBase requires this, a much lower, mindset of sort of how do I structure my data such that my application can be efficient. So there's always the um, trying to be helpful of how people are, what people are using today and how can we better integrate? How can we make that um, more seamless and give people a better user experience in that regard as well? What are some of the cool stories? What are some of the, the uh, organizations, individuals, whatever, that are using your product in exciting yeah. ways? Um, so I think probably the most, the neatest one that will hit home to a lot of people is there is the Siri team at Apple. So, you know, you know, pull out your phone. Hey, Siri, the most interesting sort of story that we've been able to get out of them. Um, a lot of information is NDA coming out of Apple. So we sort of have to really, um, pick and choose what we get to hear from them. But they, uh, said that actually, um, in their words, um, when you actually get out your phone and you say, Hey, Siri, um, turn on the lights for me that is actually hitting HBase that is running inside at Apple today. 
Um, so in their, in wor their words, they were talking about when you're actually doing operations with Siri, this is actually going out and doing your simple gets and puts that you can, you know, you would normally do in your basic, how do I use HBase application? That's really what's running behind the scenes here. And we said, that's one of those things that's pretty darn neat. Um, the Apple team has been uh, long time users. Um, they've been around for about seven years. This quote from them was about, um, was from a developer conference that we hold for HBase um, users and developers back in 2018. Um, so the best we know, um, Siri is probably one of the, the coolest things um, of our um, software. I'm trying to think some of the other big ones, um, salesforce.com. Um, so Salesforce is a big HBase user often via another Apache project called Phoenix. Um, so Phoenix is one of these sort of layers that sits on top of HBase to help make it usable in a different sense. So HBase is a NoSQL database. So we're dealing with things that's like keys and values. Phoenix is a layer that tries to be very thin, but provides you a higher level SQL layer. So you can actually write your create table, select star from table where foo. So this uh, Phoenix project logic came out of Salesforce originally, and they're still one of the um, big contributors or individuals at Salesforce are the big contributors to the Phoenix project. They gave a talk recently in which they said um, they approximately have 5 billion requests to HBase via Phoenix a day, 4 billion of those. So 80% of those are rights. So that gives sort of a, a credence to what do we really mean when we're talking about um, write heavy workloads? We're talking about know, 4 billion writes a day. Um, and that, you know, approximately going down to uh, 200 terabytes of data per day. Um, cool. So that's sort of the scales that we're talking about. Where do we go to, to learn more? So the best resource we have um, is probably the um, hbase.apache.org is a great place to start. Um, there's a lot of information there. I'd really point you at the uh, user manual that we have. Um, so the user manual is a uh, many, many page book, but it covers pretty much everything that you might uh, want to go for, whether architectural sort of explanations on what is HBase, how does it work, to um, beginning application development, how do I write to HBase, how do I get used to that? Um, it goes into how do we do community management process? So if you want to submit a patch to us, what are the things that we're going to expect from you to the help something is wrong with my HBase, how do I troubleshoot this? Um, so that user manual is a great resource, and that's linked from the website. We are super active on our mailing lists. So dev at hbase.apache.org and user at hbase.apache.org are also great resources. A group of us do hang out in a Slack channel, apache-hbase. Um, so that is, I think, closed to join originally. But if you want to join, you can send a message to the dev list and someone will add you usually within a couple hours. Um, but we're happy to have anyone come out, pick your uh, poison as to what you prefer best and uh, get involved. Thank you, Josh. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, you betcha. Thank you for doing this, Rich. <laughs>